This next segment should be of value to everyone on the dental team. And I'm asking Lisa with her expertise in dental marketing, dental practice marketing, mm -hmm. and specialty practice marketing, to tell us what goes wrong, why patients leave, but then why they stay, what goes right. So let's instead of saying what goes right and then what goes wrong, let's start with what goes wrong. Where do you want to start? <laughs> so many ways it goes so wrong. So many ways it goes. It can go south so many ways. It really does. You know, and it's so funny because I know Patient Prism addresses the phone calls that come in yes, to the, to that's the practice. You know, so let's talk about the front desk experience. Mm -hmm. um, patients like to have a feeling of being regarded yes. and being welcome. One of the things that I find is an issue is when patients meet an office that is disorganized mm -hmm. and who don't stay on message. Mm -hmm. And so it could be a warm, caring dental assistant in the back, but a nasty person up front, you know, who's too busy to be dealing with anything, and they exist. You know, they, they're so focused in making sure their insurance claims are put in and that um, that they got the schedule right and the doctor wants them to call this in and they're overworked or whatever. They forget about the patients standing around them and on the phone. And so that's a little disheartening and very off-putting to patients. It is. And there are many times a patient will leave a practice strictly on the front desk experience. I know I would. I absolutely would. I absolutely would. If I don't feel like I'm being valued, then I don't want to be there. Alternately, what can happen in the back is often a bait and switch or a perceived bait, bait and, and switch. switch. And so, again, if the doctor is not presenting treatment to the patient based on what is ultimate, what is best case, what you deserve to have done. If they don't present that first, then the patient feels like they were maybe not worthy to have the better treatment, so the doctor didn't bother giving it to them. Or perhaps it's the doctor decided to present this treatment modality but ended up having to go into something more expensive because this wasn't the best option. And so now the patient feels like they've had the bait, bait and switch. switch. And so always diagnosing and presenting best case. In a comprehensive way. Absolutely. Don't miss a beat. You don't not diagnose something. Things can be done in phases. Absolutely. They can be done efficiently. Absolutely. They can be done most cost effectively. Absolutely. But still, it's the whole. It's the whole picture. The whole picture. And and bringing a patient over to that way of thinking can be hard because they'll feel like you're you're trying to sell them dentistry mm -hmm. again. And we have to remind our patients we are not selling you dentistry. We are presenting to you best case scenario. We will adjust from there. And that's what I always say. I we love will those adjust words. From there. I love those words. You know, we're not going to give you lesser treatment. Right. We are not going to dismiss you. We are going to just make adjustments based on your perceived wants, needs, financial concerns. And now choices, we move into your own personal, your choices. personal choices. But you own beliefs. their choices. You own your choices. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I, I, it's my responsibility to present the best. You know, let's talk about the legal ramifications of that as yes. well. Um, legally, we are required to make sure that a patient is treatment planned properly because that will come and bite you in the behind if you don't. Mm -hmm. um, so don't guess, again, what a patient may want or may not want. You have to be comprehensive in that. Um, and then also be prepared for the patient who you did do that to who then, if something fails, they go to another dentist and then comes back and says, you, you did this treatment on me when you should have been doing that. And I hear that all the absolutely time. Absolutely, very litigious society. All the time. Very litigious society. So, you know, it's CY, CYB, you know, we gotta cover ourselves. And it's a shame, but if we do things right. If you do begin, things right in the beginning, mm -hmm. and spend the time to do it right. Absolutely, you know, and, and just letting the patient know. 
it's our job to, to tell you everything and then we just adjust. We just adjust. I like yeah. those words. So, um, so we've got the patient who feels like they've had bait and switch, the patient who is put off by the front desk. Um, there are the perceived patient issues where they feel like a hygienist may be too rough on them. It does happen. It does happen. I've heard that often. So, you know, are we calibrating our hygienists? You know, if you're a single hygiene practice, it's a little harder to calibrate, but mm -hmm. maybe that's when you bring in a hygiene mentor or a hygiene mm -hmm. coach. You know, doctors, don't be afraid of hiring these people to come in if you're hearing the same information. If you feel like your hygienist isn't performing to the level that he or she should be, bring somebody in who can work with them, you know, and better their verbal skills, and, you know, they're ones who will work with them clinically. Um, just because we passed our boards doesn't mean we all passed our boards with the same grade. You know, so um, I would say that's that's a concern. You know, I don't want to go back because she hurts my teeth. Well, is she hurting your teeth though, or are your mm -hmm. teeth a mess, and we need to take care of issues again? Again, how we how we present it to the patient. You know, there are things like um, cleanliness. Mm -hmm. You know, is the office organized? You know, I don't want to be in a dirty place. Clean it up. Or a very aged looking place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's all the culture of your office. Mm -hmm. It's all the culture of your office. So those are a few things that can go wrong along with billing issues, you know, insurance issues, not, not having the staff up to date on what insurance companies are providing in terms of benefits and um, overextending a patient without them being aware. Um, so we have... We, have yeah, we don't want surprises. Never. That's what causes frustration and anger in patients, mm -hmm. surprises when it comes to financial. I, I actually personally saw somebody for a, a medical thing and um, I had to go for a number of appointments and my insurance didn't cover it. And when I left at the appointment, at, at each there were three appointments, I said, you know, and I went up to the front desk, I said, I know that I have to pay out of pocket, what is my cost? And they gave me a cost for the service and I paid cash right there on mm -hmm. the spot. And I did that three successive times. Well, about eight months later, I got a bill in the mail from them. And I thought, well, that's weird. Why am I getting something from them? And uh, it was it was about 400 and some dollars worth of, of charges. Turns out they were charging me for office visits on top oh. of the service that they had performed for me. Well, now, when I went to the front desk to pay, I said, what do I owe for today? They gave me a number and I paid it. Had they told me that number plus the office visit charge at that moment, I would have just paid it, you know. But as it is, they waited all those this months. Is a surprise. Later. It was an absolute surprise and it was very disheartening and I stopped going there. And my conversation with the doctor was basically had they informed me when I was leaving, that would have been fine. But the fact of the matter is in dentistry, when a patient comes in for a procedure, we charge for the procedure. We don't charge an office visit on top of the procedure. It's all kind of rolled into one. And I was told that they had changed their policy and that's why I'd gotten a bill afterwards. Interesting. And I said, thank you very much. I'll be taking my records elsewhere. This does happen in dentistry. Mm -hmm. It does because so many practices are insurance yes. based. Yes. And they're trying to value what the patient's portion will be of the fee, mm -hmm. but they're underestimating or they're overestimating and then they don't want to give the money back. <laughs> and the yes. patients are watching all this like hawks and yes. getting upset. Yes, yes. You know, you've got to be very careful. Embezzlement happens mm -hmm. at the front desk. Um, I know of an office that um, the person up front whenever they would collect funds from a patient that was paying cash, and I mean cash, mm -hmm. not, not a check, cash, cash. Um, that cash just kind of disappeared. And then when that person left the practice, it was showing all these ledger balances of, you know, collectible funds. And the office was reaching out to these patients with all these past due balances. Well, as it turns out, all these patients came back and said, I paid that. I paid cash for that. Not one of them had written a check. Not one of them had put it on their credit card. They all came back with the same message. I paid that. I paid cash. Wow. So this person had literally been embezzling the money, the cash. No, you don't want to go through that. No, you don't. So, you know, doctors need to always they be do. aware 
because if there's there's financial discrepancies, a patient will leave the office. Mm -hmm.